Mmm. <laughs> coffee. Everybody deserves a break today. So get up and get away. Do a cup of coffee. <laughs> I had mentioned earlier in my recordings of Evotional that I'm always constantly amazed how God is able to design things so far in the past that they will apply to circumstances in the future that confirm what he is doing in the present. And one of those ways that I see him doing that was, of course, in Scripture where prophetically he said things that were to be that came about and they happened exactly as he stated, even to the very name of a king that brought a overthrow of the kingdom to the very day that Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem. Those kind of details and that kind of knowledge, ability, uh, for planning, make me mindful that we have a God who is in the infinite detail of every aspect of our life. And so, when I look at wanting to know what God is doing, I look for specifically things that I know He does. And when they fit together like a puzzle piece, and it's obvious that the picture is complete, then I know it's His will, I know it's God, and lots of times I'm just dumbfounded. So, when He, when he gave me these devotionals, and I started reading them, <laughs> it would be one thing if I had sat down and said, oh, you know, I think I'll I'll get a collection of books that, you know, I'll, maybe seven or eight of them that they'll all, you know, fit together in a perfect puzzle and that every day they'll just seem to have a certain theme and that they'll be coordinated even though they're written over centuries apart, written by different men and women, written completely isolated from each other and even in different faiths i mean they're all christian but written from different denominations and even countries and yet <laughs> they didn't read each other and plan this out i see things fitting as today utmost fit some of the other devotionals today that i had the enjoyment to read and to listen to what God may be speaking to us and I know he's definitely speaking to me and I like it the uncritical temper judge not that you be not judged Matthew 7 1 yeah I've never been able to figure out how people can get away with judging because every time I study the Bible or I study Matthew or I study anything I keep getting judged on I don't know about everybody else but anyways let's see what God may speak through Oswald Chambers. Jesus says regarding judging, don't. Period. The average Christian is the most penetratingly critical individual. Criticism is a part of the ordinary faculty of man, but in the spiritual domain, nothing is accomplished by criticism. The effect of criticism is a dividing up of the powers of the one criticized. The Holy Ghost is the only one in the true position to criticize. He alone is able to show what is wrong without hurting and wounding. It is impossible to enter into communion with God when you are in a critical temper. It makes you hard, vindictive, and cruel, and leaves you with the flattering unction that you are a superior person. Jesus says, as a disciple, cultivate the uncritical temper. It is not done once and for all. Beware of anything that puts you in a superior person's place. There is no getting away from the penetration of Jesus. If I see the mode in your eye, it means I have a beam in my own. Every wrong thing I see in you, God locates in me. Every time I judge, I condemn myself. See Romans 2, 17, 20. 2, 17 through 20. Stop having a measuring rod for other people. There is always one fact more in every case about which we know nothing at all. The first thing God does is to give us a spiritual spring cleaning. There, 
there is no possibility of pride left in a man after that. I have never met the man I could despair of after discerning what lies in me apart from the grace of God. You see, and that's the reason why, you know, all the excuses that are offered, all the phony, baloney details that people say in their own religion about why they can use judgment against each other, why they can discern, why they have some unction from God that they feel like they're superior, that they can make these distinctions between judgment, is false. Pure and simple. That's why. It's because you don't know the details. God does. When... A person comes to me and says, God told me I can judge. I'm dumbfounded. But you know what? I have yet to find one that can say that to me. Because I write on the internet. I mean, I, I function in a very scriptural, you could say, scripture writing, um, scribe writing, that I get a chance to share with people and to talk with them and to compare scriptures and to, you know, decide or to you know, study the Bible, and I have yet to find a person who can come up to me and say, you know, Jesus told me that it's okay for me to judge because I can go ahead and make that call because I have the gift of discernment and I have the gift of wisdom and I have the word of knowledge and God told me that I can judge. You know, I ask them straight up, you know, usually pretty bluntly. I said, so tell me, when Jesus said judge not, what's that mean? And they usually try to explain it and I said, well, no, no, don't tell me what you think it means. Tell me what it says. What does it say? What literally does the scripture say? And you know, it's funny because they'll say all, everything about what it says, but never what it says, because the literal word of God is the literal word of God. Jesus is speaking. He's trying to say something to a crowd. At the end of his speaking, he says, blessed are you if you do these sayings of mine. Guess what? If you don't do them, your house is like a house built on sand and it'll come crashing down. So if it was meant to be just a symbolic gesture, then he wouldn't have said, do these sayings of mine. <laughs> it's pretty blunt. So judge not. Period. The classics all said, do not judge. Men of God always try to get away with having some type of power and authority to be able to exercise so they can use that to protect, they say, the flock, when in reality it's a lack of trust in the Lord. Because we've all seen divisions come. We see people divide themselves. We see people fall away. We see people do all kinds of things. So we think we can help God out when those divisions and those strife and those angsts that happen between people may be there for a purpose, for their growing up, for their maturing, for their naturalization of coming to the realization that in their flesh there dwells no good thing. So the bottom line is, if you're a born-again Christian, don't judge. Let's just get real. You know, don't waste time. Don't even do it. Don't don't even enter into it. Ask God. Ask God what you should do about something, but don't judge. Don't take some thing that Paul said and run with it and think that you can run up to a pastor and confront them, or you can run over here and do that, or you can throw some elder out, or you can do this and you can do that. No. Judge not. State facts. Judge not. That is the hardest thing, I think, for a Christian to learn to not do, is because if you love, love covers a multitude of sins. If you love, then sometimes it might be better to just remain silent and let God source out within the Holy Spirit the root of all evil than for you to dig out what you think is the problem and the cause when you can't see the heart of man. Today, while it's still today, if you've judged, ask God to forgive you. Not the person you judged, whether you were right or wrong. Ask God to forgive you, because otherwise, you're going to be judged by Him. So, I would say, since I've heard it more than once in devotionals and emotionals, since I see it happening so often in people and lives, the best thing I could tell you today, directly from God, yeah, you like that one, that you should pray and see if it's directly from God, that you should examine the scriptures to see if it's directly from God, that you should prove to yourself whether it is directly from God. But I'll say it this way. Jesus said, judge not. Now the choice is yours to obey or not. Try interpreting that one.
when you speak to God face to face. <laughs> I know I can't, so I try not to judge. I hope you do too.